If there's one thing I can say that I really, really like about episodes versus seasons is the new artifact mods. You see, guys, every act in an episode adds a whole row of artifact mods. And with the launch of Act 3, not only did we get a new exotic mission, new story, and of course, arguably one of the best exotics Bungie has ever given us, that being Choir of One. Feel free to check out our guide and review on it. They also gave us these five new artifact mods. Now, some of these are pretty basic. You've got Overload Auto Rifles, or essentially uninterrupted fire from your equipped auto rifle, grants bullets that stun combatants, delaying ability energy regeneration, and lowering combatant damage outputs, strong against overload champions. Now, what this artifact mod really does is that it allows auto rifles to be overcharged. We're talking a free 25% damage buff just by simply having this mod equipped. Now, our next artifact mod is Authorized Mod Charged Up. This is where the energy cost of the charge up mod is significantly discounted. Funny enough, though, if you select the mod and then unselect it, at least for for me, the charged up mod costs on your chest armor still stays at one. So yeah, for the time being, guys, take advantage of it. And again, this mod just allows you to equip more armor charges. Now, the third artifact mod, this is where things start to get juicy. This one is called Sustained Fire. It reads that continuously damaging combatants with an auto rifle grants you damage resistance. Now, if we take a look here at Coral, you can see that after landing 10 continuous shots, this will cause the perk to activate, granting us resist times three for six seconds. Guys, that is massive. We're talking 40% damage resistance simply for firing your auto rifle like an auto rifle. Even more so, this can be reprocked indefinitely. Once you land another 10 shots on either that same target or another target, it will refresh that timer back to six seconds. Now, we test this a lot, and this does only work if you're hitting one enemy, which is unfortunate. That means that if you're slaying out and killing ads and lower level content, this won't grant you this damage resist buff, as most of them will die under 10 shots. I'm actually curious to know if like Bungie intentionally did this or not. Granted, I think in high level content, more specifically Grandmaster Nightfalls, you're going to activate this perk quite frequently as there are tons of ads with enough health to tank that many shots. Now, we also looked at how this interacted with some of our exotic auto rifles, most notably with their equipped perks. For instance, things like Tommy's Matchbook with the Catalyst. This allows us also to scorch targets on sustained fire. And we can see here that the scorch we apply does in fact count towards sustained fire, which is beautiful. This is much easier to proc resist times three with, both in the speed in which it takes to proc and also just not killing the enemy. A Scorch doesn't do as much damage. The same is also true for things like Necrochasm, as the poison effect applied by its cursed throw explosion also will proc resist times three. This could also work for Gavostov and the Ricochet Bullets if they manage to hit a target multiple times. But taking a more specific look at our exotic special auto rifle, Choir of One, when aiming down sights, this will still take the standard 10 shots to proc. Now, the question we had is when you hip fire, will this proc it in two bursts? Considering when you shoot from the hip, it literally fires this volley out. So it's actually five shots at a time. Now, beautifully, it only requires one shot when firing from the hip to proc the perk. Even though five shots are being consumed with each one of those volleys, it seems like the explosions from those projectiles are counting towards that sustained fire, thus proccing resist times three. Here's the thing, you can't be too close to the targets. Because the way the bullets split when you shoot this weapon, you need to have enough distance for it to actually split up into those five bullets, those five little purple things that are tracking toward the target. If you're too close, you won't get that. And this was actually pointed out by Mossy Max over on Twitter, where he said, Fun Quirk Acquire 1, the hip fire Wyvern shot, starts as a single projectile that does 10% more total damage than the sum of the five weaker projectiles, which then split off after three meters. So just some food for thoughts. Again, if you're looking for more of a deep dive on this exotic, we'll have that out if it's not already out now. With that being said, though, let's move on to our fourth artifact mod, Targeting Autoloader. This one says that that while you have an auto rifle equipped, defeating combatants reloads your equipped weapon and temporarily increases weapon damage. It also awards bonus progress when dealing final blows while surrounded. So essentially here, guys, when using an auto rifle, kills will fill up 50% of an invisible meter. When at 100%, that being two kills, this will refill your auto rifle's mag and grant you one stack of targeting auto load. Now this will go up to a maximum of five stacks and it lasts for 15 seconds. And this grants a stacking damage damage bonus at each stack, as well as increasing the amount of ammo that you return to the magazine. Now, if you are within 15 meters of three or more enemies, kills will grant you 100% progress, meaning a one-to-one. -one. On top of that, max stacks will also grant you 100% progress, thus refreshing our timer to 15 seconds. Now, for the damage increases here, one stack is 10%, two stacks is 13%, three stacks is 16%, four stacks is 18%, and finally, five stacks is 20%. Now, this damage 
damage increase can actually stack with other buffs. Even things like Radiance. You see our Coral at max stacks, we hit for 2,059 damage. But then if we apply things like Radiance, our damage increases to 2,574. And I know that seems like common sense, but we always want to make sure that things do in fact stack. There's been a few times in the past where that's not been the case, but here there are no issues. Now as for the amount refilled, at one to two stacks, this is 20%. Three stacks is 30%. And at four to five stacks, this refills 40% of the mag. This perk beautifully synergizes with guns like Kvostov and Necrochasm, as kills from either the Ricochet Rounds or the Curse Throw Explosion will refill the magazine, therefore granting progress toward targeting autoloader. Now, interestingly enough, it does not work with Volt Shot. As when using it right here with Prosecutor, with Volt Shot, any of the kills from Volt Shot itself would not count towards targeting autoloader. So definitely some conflict here. And with Volt Shot requiring you to reload, you can sometimes be in a situation where you do get a kill, but it auto reloads the weapon, and therefore you're gonna have to shoot a few more shots to finally get the reload in. Now, I'm under the assumption that because Volt Shot leans into our subclass verbs, that's why it's not contributing here to targeting autoloader. For instance, Dragonfly on Prosecutor will in fact count towards targeting autoloader. Now, despite some things not working with it, overall, targeting autoloader is a fantastic artifact mod. It does a great job of not only buffing up our auto rifles, but also keeping you in the gunfight even longer. But now, this takes us to our final artifact mod for Act 3, that being Shock and Awe. This is actually returning from Season of the Deep, and it reads that when you have an Arc or Prismatic subclass equipped, Arc Final Blows, while you are amplified, summon a burst of lightning that damages and jolts targets. This is an extremely strong perk. It hasn't changed much since its release. The fact that it works with Prismatic is what makes this so deadly. Essentially, Arc Kills will summon a single lightning strike that damages and jolts enemies. Now, this does still have about a five second cooldown as it did previously, but you'll essentially be calling down lightning every time it's available by only needing to be amplified, which is incredibly easy to do through simply scoring Arc multi kills or by consuming your grenade with things like Getaway Artist. Hell, I was even rocking a Caliban Liar's Handshake build on Hunter the other day, and we were just doing solo runs of Expert Onslaughts. And this artifact mod was disgusting with this build. Shock and all is taking some of the most lethal builds and cranking it up to 11, as it works off of any arc damage kills. Both your abilities, your weapons, all of these things will spawn that extra lightning strike. And what's so great about this perk, it's not just the damage that the lightning strike brings, it's the fact that it jolts. This perk is essentially giving everything vote shots, which yes means you have the ability to stun champions. Now, with an overview for all of our artifact mods out of the way, what are some of the weapons that synergize the best here? Fellas, I urge you to get Choir of One. This is not only a good exotic for this season, or I guess in this case, this episode, but this is an exotic that's going to continue to be good, at least until Bungie decides to nerf it, which I don't believe they're going to. The DPS on it, though, is phenomenal. It's total damage. Phenomenal. And everything we have here in our artifact mods, most notably the auto rifle artifact mods, contribute to that. You can literally see us right here doing DPS guys it puts out with the ability of sustained fire to auto reload the damage resists you could be a walking tank with choir of one while simultaneously dishing out a load of damage on top of the damage increases from targeting auto loader now another auto rifle that has actually been very much overshadowed and that's just due to the fact that choir of one is just so good is centrifuge this is an arc auto rifle which means it could take advantage of every one of these artifact mods from overload auto rifle to sustained fire for that damage resist to galvanic armor since everything about this auto rifle is us going amplified and targeting the autoloader, tack that on with shock and all, spawning those lightning on kills. I think you're seeing where we're going with this. This is a very, very good auto rifle for these artifact mods. Just the reason why none of us are talking about it right now is because Choir of One is just so good. And personally, guys, I haven't been able to take Choir of One off since I've gotten it. Now, the next auto rifle I want you to look at, though, is Prosecutor. Not only does it have roles like Volt Shot and Rewind Rounds, but similar to Centrifuge, it's an arc weapon. And despite targeting autoloader, having difficulties proccing from Volt Shot, this is still a fantastic legendary option to dip into all these artifact mods, including Sustained Fire and shock and all. Now keep in mind, I know a lot of the focus has been on auto rifles right now in this discussion, but you still have other arc weapons that beautifully synergize with things like shock and all. You've got Corrasion, Indebted Kindness, two weapons that are already very, very good weapons. You've got Trinity Ghoul, which already spits out a ton of arc damage. Throw on shock and all, you've got even more chain lightning capabilities. Even more so, one of my favorite builds this season, which is our Ergo Lock build, where you essentially just run around procking arc conductor. That too works with shock and all. 
So essentially, if you've been utilizing any arc weapon or any arc build, these things are all going to be picked up even more with shock and awe. Now, as for other weapons that we can look towards, both Necrochasm and Kvostov really are very nice with our two auto rifle mods. No, they're not arc, but they are two auto rifles we recently looked at in a comparison because they're very good at what they're supposed to do, which is clear ads very effectively. Now, it looks like Kvostov seems to proc this the easiest due to its ricochet rounds. You'll get that sustained fire pretty much instantly. On top of that, the ability to auto reload Kvostov mid spray the targeting auto loader really just makes me wish this was a feature on Kvostov rather than just something we have for the next, I don't know, five, six weeks. Now, something we didn't notice though when looking at Necrochasm was that it does in fact proc off of the Curse Throw explosion. You see, that Curse Throw explosion actually counts as arc damage, thus giving us the ability to proc shock and all. You'll get a massive explosion, and then if that kills more, you get that lightning strike to then proc, jolting everything. It's a beautiful thing to see ultimately though guys auto rifles are extremely juiced at the moment if you are a fan of auto rifles take advantage of these mods until the end of this episode it's honestly going to be sad to see these go because we just don't have as much time with them as we did with our other artifact mods but for the time being guys take full advantage of it and hopefully in the next episode we'll get some love toward our auto rifles early on well fellas and ladies thank you all for coming and watching and as always slap that like button like your mama told you right